Hello everybody and welcome to my 1 to 99 crafting guide. Crafting is one of the best skills to max out as early as possible. The reason for this is that it provides an unlimited teleport to the crafting guild which is very close to a bank. If I were to be remaking a normal account today this would probably be one of the first 99s that I went for just for that simple fact to put you very close to a bank. It's really in my opinion the second best skill cape to have behind the construction cape. In this video I'm going to be going over a few different methods and tell you the method that I recommend. Uh, I'm also using this to cap out my main at 99 currently. You can check the description for timestamps if you want to jump around this video just depending on what level you're at. So let's get into it. Actually before we jump in... Got <laughs> And it would mean the world to me if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'm currently at 585 subs. I'm closing in on the first thousand subs. So again, it would mean a lot. I also hear you're going to get better RNG today if you do it. So I'm going to go over the methods that I personally recommend doing first. And then I'm also going to have some honorable mentions in here as well. Some things that may be a little more AFKable and then other things that could actually make you some profit while you're training crafting. First things first, here's a list of the quests that give you crafting experience. It'll also show the requirements for them as well. I'd recommend knocking some of these out early just because early questing is the best way for levels, saves GP, and also just very quick levels there in the beginning. So to kick us off from levels 1 to 20, we're going to be crafting leather armor. So from levels 1 to 7, you're going to be making leather gloves. From 7 to 9 will be leather boots. 9 to 11 will be leather cowls, 11 to 14 will be leather vamps, and 14 to 20 will be leather bodies. This is going to go by very fast. You just need a needle, some thread, and you're going to need 271 leather. That costs around 40k GP if you're buying it on the Grand Exchange at the time of me making this video. Once you hit level 20, you're going to be moving on to cutting gems. For this, you will just need a chisel and the gem that you are cutting. From 20 to 27, you're going to cut sapphires. It's a notable mention here that you're going to be making around 135k experience an hour and pretty much breaking even on doing this. So you could keep doing this for a while just to keep your overall cost down on the gems. If you're just doing this AFK or you have a little more time. So just to get to emeralds, you're going to need 106. Once you hit 27, you're going to move on to emeralds. You're going to need 156 of them for this step. These are going to lose you about 9 GP per cut, uh, but they're almost another 50,000 experience per hour. So if you're just trying to get it done as fast as you can, I'd recommend moving up to them. From 34 to 43, you can move on to rubies, which will bring you around 230k XP an hour, and you're going to need to cut 355 of them to get to diamonds. Now here's where you're going to notice that your GP starts to dwindle down pretty fast. From 43 to 54 crafting, it'll take 936 diamonds, which will cost you around 440k in today's market. I recommend stopping here with the gems and going to battle stabs for the rest of your training. So when you're crafting battle stabs, you're going to be able to make around 2400 per hour. If you're going to be doing this method from 54 to 99, which I personally recommend, because it's really just the best balance of XP gain and GP loss, you're going to need 94,194 battle staffs, 736 water orbs, 972 earth orbs, 1300 fire orbs, and 91,187 air orbs. Now, I just threw a bunch of numbers out at you, so let's talk about Runelight and its calculator plugin. Because questing and other things are going to grant you some experience, we want to make sure you know how to calculate all of this by yourself. So if you click on the calculator button on the side panel of Runelight, it will auto-pop your current experience. You can then look here to see how many of something you need for the next level. You can also set your target level so you know exactly what you need for multiple levels. Another pro tip that I have and I want to show you is when you are crafting battle stabs, there's an easier way to do this where you can change the left click option from wheel to use. It's pretty simple. You just shift right click on one in your inventory and change the left click option to use. Because I have definitely equipped many battle staffs before I knew you could do this. 
So if you follow the guide up to this point and you do swap over two battle staves, you're going to spend around 38 to 40 mil to get from 1 to 99 crafting. It's really not bad for how quick of a Bible it is, and it can be achieved in about 50 hours. To put that into perspective, that's about the amount of time it takes to get from 50 to 99 fire making at Wintertod, and this is much less click intensive and can be a lot more AFKable. Starting at level 63, you can also change to crafting Dragonhide bodies, but doing this is going to cost you around 185 mil and really only speeds up the whole grind by a few hours, something like 7 or 8 hours, so in my opinion, really just not worth it. I'd rather stick to the battle staffs. Now, glass blowing is also a really good method. The XP rates are a little bit lower, but it does not cost nearly as much and is pretty AFKable. Nearly one minute per inventory. I personally did this a lot when I was at work AFKing, so it is a pretty viable option for most people. Also good to mention here, if you've completed Lunar Diplomacy and you have 77 magic, you can also cast Super Glass Make from 61 to 99 and get some mage XP while doing crafting. This method is going to average you around 100 to 150k an hour in crafting and 50 to 60k per hour in magic experience. Personally, I'm going to do this on my Iron Man just to kind of two birds, one stone it. But on a main account, I would probably stick to a different method. Again, that's just my opinion. And I think that that's very important to mention here in any guide video. Try all of these methods, figure out what works best for you, and do that method. You don't have to do what I do. You don't have to do what Theoatrix does. Just do whatever you have the most enjoyment out of doing. Now, let's talk about some of the money-making methods. The first one I would definitely do if I didn't have much GP and was a newer account, and that would be making drift nets. The requirements for this are going to be the completion of the Bone Voyage quest in 26 crafting. Just as a little blooper, it took me forever to get through that because I kept messing up and saying Bone Voyage. Uh, but it's also going to take 29 construction to build the loom and bank chest on Fossil Island. To do this, you'll just need a full inventory of the jute fibers. Yields about 60k XP an hour, but it makes about 400,000 GP per hour. I would definitely do this over glass blowing just to make the, the GP difference up. Okay, and last but not least, making bracelets is another good way to make money while doing this. You can make about 1,000 to 1,300 of them per hour. And if you make ruby bracelets, for instance, you'll make about 110k XP an hour and between 185 and 200k GP per hour. So definitely a good mention there and something you can do if you're a little low on GP. Um, also, Iron Man may find it easier to do bracelets with the accessibility to gem bags through like stardust mining and other things. And going to give my unsolicited opinion one more time, I personally recommend going for XP over GP just because you could do other money-making methods to make more money down the road. If you can spend the GP on it now, it would be a great investment just for that cape and the teleport, especially if you don't have a maxed out POH, um, but definitely recommend getting the cape for it. This is definitely the longest guide video I've made and really the most detailed, so let me know in the comments what you think below. Um, and thank you for staying this long if you made it this far, and hope to see you've subscribed, and then... We'll see you on the next video.